Hello, welcome and a very good evening. And tonight we have a small little device for retro PCs and actually all computers that support a activity LED for the hard disk drive. And naturally after 30 years or so, a lot of the old hard drives have failed and they are a bit cumbersome, they are loud, they are slow. So usually what we do nowadays, we take uh, compact flash cards instead of hard disks. Um, the advantage here being that many of these are more or less compatible to regular old ATA hard disks because it's basically the same interface. Not all uh, compact flash cards work with every retro computer, but uh, this one here works fine in my 486 PC and um, it's one gigabyte in size, as you can see. The compact flash is, of course, much more modern, but it's still already a more or less obsolete media replaced by micro SD and SD cards. And there are adapters from micro SD to compact flash or from SD to, or micro SD to IDE or ATA. Um, so there are different solutions, but um, I'm currently still using Compact Flash, but whatever you're using, um, it's usually one kind of flash-based memory storage instead of the spinning magnetic disks. And the important thing about the old hard disks was that they are loud. You hear the spinning sound, but most importantly, you could hear the heads move around and you would hear this click, 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 and so on. When a program was loading, it was basically also something to hear when you thought maybe my machine is hanging or maybe not. There were dreaded uh, clicks of death when the hard disk was dying, for example, but also just the regular noise when Windows was swapping or whatever, but you still knew, okay, the computer's doing something, let's give him one or two minutes and then Let's see what's happening. You don't have this with a compact flash or the SD or micro SD adapters. So our good friend uh, Matthias Matze79 from the DOS Reloaded forum designed this thing here. This is one of the earlier prototypes, more or less, I think, um, which is a, I think this is an 80 tiny. Yes, it's an 80 tiny microcontroller. And there's an in and an out port basically and yeah what you do with this is it's simulating the hard disk noises very simple basically um, you plug in the uh, LED, LED cable from the hard disk controller and you also have an out port here to have both the LED and the sound basically and this here is the newer version um, Looks more or less the same, slightly different uh, stuff on here, layout, and most importantly, all the SMD components, which is why we don't have to solder much. There's uh, the beeper and a couple of uh, pin headers that we have to do. The rest was already assembled in the factory, which is very nice and very cheap nowadays. Uh, you can also break off at these wide edges to get a smaller footprint or this larger footprint for mounting inside of a hard disk case or something like that. So that's pretty neat. Yeah, so um, let's build this. Uh, I think uh, this is for power because the uh, LED cable, of course, doesn't supply any power. So we need to have a 3.5 inch Molex style connector in your machine uh, to just make to the, just to make the sound. But you can use like a Y cable for your um, compact flash adapter, for example, and then power both of, of one rail, because I think this uses probably very, very little um, power. Yeah, so we're going to solder these few things in here. Um, I think this thing might be flashed. I have to check. Well, we'll see. And this might also work. So we will plug both in and see what they're doing. Um, yeah. So 
So let's have another look into my Frankenstein 486, which is a modern ATX case with a very modern gigabyte power supply. I had to swap out the last one because it was bad after I fried some electronics a couple of years back and I just noticed that the 5 volt rail was way too low. So this got replaced and um, under all this terrible cable management we see the uh, clicker module now and I uh, pinned it down with one screw similar to the ATX to AT power supply thingy. Um, yeah, and as you can see, it sits there quite neatly. I also put some captain tape on the back if it ever would touch any metal there that it doesn't short out. But I think it should be safe here because there's like three centimeters of clearing or something like that. Almost, yeah, more than an inch, I think. Um, that should do it. So the wiring is as follows. Here, this thing um, with a lot of ribbon cables is the uh, multi-IO card with the LED connector here. Blue is positive in this case because uh, Mats only sent me this blue-green cable. Um, positive always goes to the left on this board. Same with the HDD LED for the computer case. So this is basically the pass-through. And then here goes a 3.5 inch power, Molex power connector also with positive on the left side. So all the positives are on the left side which is easy to remember, I think. And other than that, that's it, I would say. Um, you can move it around a bit, um, but I think it shouldn't do anything because it can't move further than that. So we're gonna fire up the machine and um, have a listen and a look on what this sounds like when there is a lot of disk activity. So let's run some software to hear what the HD clicker sounds like and what better program than Windows. Let's listen in. Okay, there we go. And maybe also let's start up uh, WinWord 2.0 because that's the largest program I got. That's that. And also let's load a document and hear what that sounds like and maybe even the help file. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. I think you can hear the quite noticeable clicking sound just like a real hard disk. And I think another very good example of uh, hard disk hard at work is the Microsoft Defrag program, which is for defragmenting hard disks, obviously which is a thing that you don't have to do anymore on solid state disks you use today. But on rotating platters, you had sometimes to defragment your disk. Otherwise, the heads had to move around a lot to fetch one single file. And it would sort all the clusters of every file back into play. So let's listen in a bit what this sounds like when the hard disk is really, really hard at work. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice. Although with defrag it's almost a bit annoying, but I think for regular programs it's just fine. So that's the HDD Clicker, a fascinating little device that uh, gives you the typical hard disk clicks of moving hands for systems that use SD cards or compact flash cards and don't have any spinning media anymore. And I think it's a really neat little device that adds a lot of fun to retro PC computing. And um, I, for example, don't even have such old hard disks anymore. This one here is my oldest hard disk that I still have, a 3.5 inch hard disk with 500 gigabytes and SATA interface from my last Linux PC, I think, um, which is way more than 10 years ago, I think. Um, so, uh, even if I wanted to have a spinning hard disk in my 486, I would have to go on eBay and buy a used old one, which probably doesn't work anymore. Maybe it does. And I think um, that's one thing I can do away with on retro machines, not having spinning hard disks. They are cool in a way, and if there were newly made old style hard disks, maybe I would get one but the old ones have way too much problems for me to deal with. 
And contrary to, for example, floppy disks, especially on the Amiga and the C64, um, where I love handling the media, swapping disks and printing out disk labels for that and stuff like that. It's like this whole vinyl, vinyl um, audio record experience. You handle nice media and you put it in and load the game. And it's a very nice experience. But with hard disks, not so much. They are hidden away in your PC anyway. So having a much faster compact flash card is and so much more reliable is much, much nicer. But to have this extra clicking sound that you know the computer is doing something is actually pretty useful. And I thought at first, well, that's a useless gimmick, but I'm now convinced that it's a great addition for very low price because these are box standard components um, and it can be assembled by JLC, PCB or whatever supplier you use. So I think very, very, very great invention. Thank you, Matze, for this gift um, of this prototype. Um, the other one I paid him for. So that's all good. Um, anyway, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button. And what's really helping is if you share my videos on social media, Twitter, uh, Mastodon, Facebook, whatever you like. Um, this brings in new viewers and uh, I'd like to see more people watching my videos. And uh, you can also support me via Ko-Fi, Patreon and PayPal. Links are down in the description. If you can't, it doesn't matter. It keeps uh, me doing more of these videos, keeping my hobby afloat, um, because usually all these things cost money, obviously. Um, but if you can't, won't, support me like that. It's okay to leave a comment, um, share your experiences with old hard disks and stuff like that. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!